Hello besties and welcome to a Genshin 2022 Rewind. So around this time of year everybody goes over what happened in the year, obviously. <laughs> YouTube Rewind was a thing that used to happen and um... Yeah. If you know about that, that uh, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> This is just unscripted, this is all freeform jazz, you know. Oh, you must acquire a taste for freeform jazz. We're just gonna be having a good time with it. I'm just gonna be going over some of Genshin's highlights of the year and some of your highlights that you sent to me on the Discord because I asked for it. And, you know, I asked some of my friends too, I'm gonna be honest. And some of these are my personal favorites. The point is, it's, <laughs> it's all things that happen in Genshin in 2022, so let's get started. So on January 5th, 2022, that's the only actual date I have written down, and Kinomiya came out. I know a lot of us don't really go there anymore, but I personally really enjoy it. I think it has some of the best visuals and soundtrack in all of Genshin so far. I really like it. Plus, we got Before Sun and Moon, which is the book that tells us all about pre-Archon lore to that. That was, I think, my favorite lore drop ever, so... I'm having fun rewinding to that one because I still always go back to Before Sun and Moon. Like, how many times have I used that in a video? Way too many. I'm... Don't... Somebody takes up Before Sun and Moon away from me, for real. Also in Ekonomia, we met everybody's favorite NPC, Enjo, who at first was just like a normal guy, and then turned out to be an Abyss Lector. Also around the time of that event where we heard Enjo's voice was when <laughs> Yaimiko's banner was, and I did spend $100 on her. And that's all I have to say about that. In April, we had the first ever Iridori Festival, which I hope comes back. Everybody loved it. You know, everybody clapped. It was it was great. It was really fun. It was cool to see characters from different countries kind of just all hanging out in one place together. I have the furniture that we got from it, the, the screen that Albedo painted with all of the people on it, the five Kasen on it. And it's in my teapot in front of my alchemy table and my forging thingy. This is what happens when I don't script a video. One of my favorite things that happened this year was when the chasm was released after years of waiting. It totally surpassed my expectations. It's honestly one of my favorite places in the game. I love the quest. I think, again, it's beautiful. It was just really cool. I liked the new gameplay of like the rocks that um, kind of have earthquakes. I thought that was fun. Also, speaking of the chasm, let's talk about the Perilous Trail quest slash event and the best cutscene we ever got, in my opinion, where Xiao almost died. This trip may be dangerous, <sighs> yet you insist on going. I have guarded this place for several hundred years, only to seek the nameless Yaksha. Do I request your approval? That was by far the best cutscene, not just of the year, but of the whole game to me. I, th I thought it was really well done. And like, I'm not just saying that because I love Zhongli and he got a little cameo. That was like the most we saw of him all year. <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> In June, we had Ito's- <laughs> In my notes, I named it Ito's Epic Drum Event. <laughs> I know that's not what it was called, but um, yeah, we had Ito's Epic Drum event. It was really fun. I loved the rhythm game thing that we had all the way back in 1.4 in Windbloom, and I wanted them to bring that back really bad. Love that they did it with character themes this time. My personal favorite beat map was Toma's. In July, we had Summertime Odyssey, which was the rerun of Midsummer Island Adventure, which was the Archipelago event. I personally did not love this event, but I did really like seeing Fischl's story come back. I'm a big Fischl fan. A lot of you don't know this about me. Fischl was in my party for about a year, all the way up until A came out. Yeah, so I started playing in November 2020. I got A in September 2021. Fischl was in there for a long time. I love Fischl. She was the first character I ever pulled. First character I ever crowned. I just, I adore her. She's the love of my life. I was really excited to see her. Sorry for turning this to official Stan account. And then of course we have A Winter Night's Lazo, the best video that ever happened. The way everybody went insane about it was so funny to me. And now we have all our favorite Harbingers. My favorite is Columbina. I really like her. I think she's very pretty. And that's the only reason I like her, honestly. And obviously we have to address Sumeru came out this year and it was a train wreck to me personally, but lots of people seem to really enjoy it. So, you know, I'm happy for them, whatever. If you like Sumeru, that's great. But like, somebody go back and count how many times I started a video by saying, I don't like Sumeru, but I probably said that a thousand times. It's insane. Now, this was my favorite thing that happened all year. We saw Dottore in game for the first time ever after knowing about him for two years because we met him in the comic. 
I have been a diehard Dottore stan ever since we saw him in the comic years ago, and I was not disappointed when I saw him in game. I know a lot of Dottore fans were mourning the loss of the webcomic Dottore, but I like this new guy. I think, I think he's fun. I love them both. The biggest event of the year was definitely Scaramouche finally beating the unplayable allegations perpetuated heavily by me. He became playable. My friend, who is also a mod in my Discord server, went absolutely insane. I'm gonna put some screenshots of her stuff. And of course, the most recent event, Ito started yet another event, Akitsuki Modamashi, where he, I guess, threw bugs out of trees? I don't know, I didn't really follow the story all that much, to be honest. Hey, Paimon! <laughs> Did he throw the, the bugs out of the trees? Yo, somebody let me know in the comments below. Did Ito throw bugs? <laughs> Sound off in the comments if he did. When I asked you guys what your favorite moments were this year, you guys were just down bad <laughs> for new characters. I am putting you on blast. It was really cute to see what happened with you guys this year in Genshin, what your favorite moments were. I think my favorite moment this year from like game from a gameplay standpoint would probably be pulling Nahida. I've been waiting for her for a really long time. I always thought that the Denzo Arkham would be a really cool character, and she definitely is. I don't love her character design, but I love everything else about her. I think she's amazing. Now, if I were to name this year, I would call 2022 the year of Scaramouche. <laughs> I don't like him, but this has definitely been his year. First he showed up in the Iridori Festival and everyone lost their minds, and then he showed up in Sumeru and everybody lost their minds, and then he became playable and everybody lost their minds. So unfortunately this has been the year of Scaramouche. He's even a boss now. Hopefully next year will be the year of someone I like, but I doubt it. I really don't think there's a year of Yoimiya happening anytime soon. As for my personal 2022 Rewind, I gained over 3,000 subscribers this year, which is absolutely insane. I literally cannot thank you guys enough. My top three videos this year were a Battle Pass cutscene analysis, predictions about future Archons that I made before we even met Nahida, and a theory on Conria's location in Tibet. Personally, I think all three of those videos are really good, so watch them. <laughs> watch all my videos, really. I like seeing the number go up on the view counter. Please watch them. Besides my regular theory videos, I also made some themes for characters that don't have them, like Vanessa and Dottori and Dainsleaf, as well as one for Hazo that was the most popular of the songs I made. I'm hoping to get to 10,000 subscribers in 2023, so subscribe <laughs> if you want to make that happen. And yeah, just thank you for an amazing year in Genshin, on YouTube, outside of Genshin, outside of YouTube. You guys have been awesome. Been having a great time here with Genshin and with you guys, and I can't wait to keep doing it in 2023.